In a world where bigger is often seen as better, mega projects symbolize human ambition and technological prowess. From the towering skyscrapers in China to modern expressways, these engineering marvels are designed to impress and inspire. But what happens when these projects fail or are held back by challenges? Mega projects worth over $1 trillion in Southeast Asia are facing significant challenges. In today's episode, we'll look at these projects and explain the reasons for the challenges they're facing. We'll also provide some examples and background information on these mega projects. So, let's begin. Mega projects are extensive systems initiated by the government or private sector that cost more than a billion dollars. Several mega projects worth over $1 trillion are in Southeast Asia, China, the Philippines, Indonesia, Vietnam, Malaysia, Myanmar, and Thailand. The concept of mega projects is not new. The need for mega projects began with the drive to develop the region, which involved building infrastructure to aid rapid growth and development. China's Belt and Road Initiative, or the BRI, has played a significant role in initiating these projects by providing funds. Interestingly, failing or uncompleted projects in the region amount to more than $50 billion, with over 50% reflecting projects that have been canceled, downsized, or are unlikely to continue. To be honest, the reasons most mega projects in Southeast Asia are failing are not far-fetched. It's the same reason most projects fail in other parts of the world. It concerns corruption or financial mismanagement, delays, and political issues. When it comes to delays, it could be environmental or public safety concerns. An excellent example is the COVID-19 pandemic. It impacted every continent, and Southeast Asia was not excluded. As a result of travel restrictions and the flow of workers and goods across borders, alongside local measures implemented to curtail the spread of the virus, most projects were abandoned, which caused delays. In 2020, the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs said that 20% of mega projects were seriously affected by the pandemic. So the pandemic partially explained the failing mega projects in the region. The next problem is corruption. It significantly impedes the development of emerging countries and further improves the quality of life in developed countries. Corruption has at least two significant effects, market distortion and worse cost. What do we mean by market distortion? To enforce corruption, policymakers may prefer a particular site for the project under the physical control of a corrupt official. This step will make it difficult to effectively monitor the project and raise the overall cost beyond the actual cost. Corruption reduces the quality of infrastructure services and decreases efficiency by favoring construction firms with corrupt connections rather than the most efficient ones. It also delays delivery time and reduces the potential infrastructure economy because suboptimal projects are often implemented. Another significant factor behind the failing mega projects in the region is their nature and scale. Mega projects are usually large and ambitious. Do you know one typical problem with large scale infrastructure projects? They're susceptible to delays and schedule slippage because of challenges such as regulatory approvals, land acquisition, and bureaucratic procedures. Some estimates suggest that over 90% of mega projects exceed their proposed timeline and budget. Lastly, you have political issues. A change of government, war, and civil unrest have contributed to mega projects failing in the region. A classic example is the mega railway project in Thailand. The project was abandoned after the parliament was dissolved in 2011. Although the Thai government tried to fund the project, it remains uncompleted. There's no shortage of mega projects in Southeast Asia. From China to the Philippines and Malaysia to Thailand, you'll see projects worth $1 trillion or more either abandoned, unused, or uncompleted. In summary, these projects fail to provide any value to the citizens. Some of them are the East Coast Rail Link project in Malaysia, initiated by Prime Minister Najib Razak in 2016. The Thai Rail Link was suspended two years later. Why was such an essential project abandoned? Political issues with China caused the financial arrangements between Malaysia and China to be contentious. Trouble started in 2018, when revelations emerged that approximately 90% of the contract value had been paid to the contractor, China Petroleum Pipeline Bureau, despite only a tiny percentage of the work being completed. In the aftermath of the investigation, Approximately $330 million was recovered from the company, almost equal to 14% of the contract's total value. But that was not the end of it. Prime Minister Mathahir Mohamed realigned and renegotiated the project at a lower cost in 2019. However, Prime Minister Ismail Sabri reverted the project to its original plan. 
Current Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim agreed on the project at another significantly lower cost, the Thailand-China High-Speed Railway. You can't talk about failing mega-projects in Southeast Asia without mentioning this project. The railway is an excellent example of domestic politics wreaking havoc on infrastructure ambitions. Announced in 2010, the project was envisioned as a joint rail venture between Thailand and China with a proposed 51-49 financial split. However, the project hit a snag following the dissolution of the country's parliament a year later. After a considerable debate, Thailand will fund the entire project, with some local media calling the Chinese loan a debt trap. Nonetheless, a Chinese company will still build the railway. PNR, Bicol Line, and Mindanao Railway Project. Here's another project that held massive promise for citizens, but was hindered by unforeseen circumstances. The initial plan was for the railway to stretch from Kalamba, in the busy city of Laguna, to Daraga. But plans to revive the project kept going off track. Trouble started with the delay of funds from the Chinese government, even after agreeing over a $2 billion contract with Chinese contractors to finance the project. Since negotiations continue to stall, the project remains a pipe dream. One reason for the delays is Beijing's reluctance to lower the interest rate to 2.5%, which is lower than the 3% originally agreed upon with the former administration led by President Duterte. Meanwhile, the project is already behind schedule because it was supposed to start before the pandemic. The people in the region may still benefit from alternative routes that are slowly reopened with bridges and tracks fixed. However, some old tracks need replacement to accommodate the more significant, faster trains. Solving the challenge of funding remains the government's priority. Similarly, the story is the same for the Mindanao Railway, also called the Trans-Mindanao High-Speed Railway. It's supposed to run through Mindanao, the southernmost central island in the Philippines, connecting major cities. In its current form, a railway network is 1,544 kilometers long. Development began in the latter part of 2010, However, the project didn't become a reality until 2018, when it received initial funding from Congress. But here comes the kicker. Construction has yet to begin on the first phase of the railway. So why has the construction of such an important project not started? First, the project was delayed in 2022 because the Department of Transportation didn't receive the Chinese government's shortlist of design and build contractors. Fun fact. The Chinese government only starts negotiations for loans after selecting a contractor for the project. In 2023, the Chinese government withdrew the loan for the project entirely. The project was scheduled to become fully operational by 2032. The proposed budget for the railway was $1.4 billion. Both railway projects were supposed to connect passengers to major cities and ease the traffic jams usually experienced by Filipinos. In a nutshell, the challenges faced by mega-projects in the region can be grouped into five categories. Local stakeholders' engagement, nature and scale, global economic downturns, and energy transition. A look at the problem of local stakeholders' engagement highlights the reluctance of the region's governments to engage the local communities before starting a mega-project. A deeper look at this problem shows the effect of long-term dictatorship on the political class. Most nations in the region are transitioning to democratic government, which requires more dialogue with locals. However, they are struggling to grasp this idea. Most people don't know that successful projects require the active involvement and support of local partners, including various levels of government and affected communities. Then, there are the problems of nature and scale. With mega-projects, the probability of success often comes down to scale. Smaller projects have a higher chance of success because they require less money, labor, and space. The global economic downturn is not overlooked, as most Southeast Asian countries are still recovering from the effects of the pandemic. Lastly, you have the issue of energy transition. There's a greater emphasis on eco-friendly projects, implying that most fossil fuel projects must be adapted, rescaled, or abandoned to meet the standard. In summary, the failure of megaprojects in the region directly and indirectly affects the people. For instance, billions of dollars are spent on these projects. If completed, they will change people's lives by creating employment for the locals and bringing more tax revenue for the authorities. But when they become failing megaprojects, they represent a waste of public funds and increased debt for the nation. The more significant implication is that the people are left to lick their wounds as they will lose their lands and the opportunities the project should provide them. Additionally, failing mega projects imply that the government must spend more money to resurrect the project. 
they must reallocate resources to other sectors, such as public health care and improved labor conditions. Overall, building mega projects is necessary for development. Still, it should be done cautiously to ensure its successful completion, because a failing project can have enormous consequences for the region and its people. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on our new content. Thank <music> you.